there's a new bar in town. Welcome to the Turnbuckle Arms, where the banter flows like wine and the topics are as fresh as an ice cold pint. So pull up a chair, grab yourself a glass, and welcome your hosts, The Brood! Hello and welcome to this very special edition of the Turnbook Alarm podcast. I can officially declare that the pub is open, our drinks have been chilled and poured to perfection and we are now sat in our preferred seats. I am your inaugural host for this edition, Miss Lexi Helms, and I am joined by my fellow brood members in no particular order, Grizz, birthday boy number one, the self-appointed reigning and defending wrestling with big johnny brain buster champion of the world mr grizz get the belt in the shot there (laughs) i am joined by uh birthday boy number two mr big chalky t i am also joined by fellow brood member jason hello soon find out what that's about uh i I'm also joined by the jolliest member of our team, <laughs> uh, Mike, aka Michael. Just Hello. Says, just call me Michael. And yeah. then lastly, Matt, Mister. I'm happy to be here. That is the brood, and we'll get more. We'll get back to them shortly. On behalf of the Turnbuckle Arms podcast, can we send a massive thank you to announcer Mike Angus for our introductions? They are fantastic. And for our resident house band, Half Decent for our intro theme, which is also fantastic. We are beyond amazed at the work that you guys have done and we would not have the Turnbook Alarms without you. So thank you so, so much. And this is the bit where I have to channel Lance Storm, lads, and I have to be serious for a minute. This isn't the start to the Turnbuckle Arms that we planned. Professional wrestling is frankly crazy at times. And at times it can be filled with uplifting moments. It can be filled with moments of inspiration. And at times it can get dark. And unfortunately we are in this time. As a collective, we here at the Turnbuckle Arms determined that we cannot ignore the hashtag speak out movement. It is simply too big of an issue to ignore. We would just like to take this opportunity to offer our support to anyone affected by this movement. However, out of respect for the, to those involved and a potential police investigation, we will not discuss this matter further. Okay lightening it up changing it up a little bit just a quick rundown of what we're going to do for a turnbuckle arms um every third weekend we are going to get together we being the brood uh, and we are going to have a virtual bevy whilst discussing a topic that has been determined by either ourselves or yourselves um surrounding the crazy world of professional wrestling i believe me no- the bevies will be real the bevies will be real, trust me. They're all here, ready to go. Um, it could be WWE, it could be NXT, it could be AW, it could be New Japan, it could be indie promotions. Nothing is excluded from here. We'll also be discussing uh, some pressing issues that we simply can't ignore. So we will um, cover news items or something that has either irritated us or interested us as fans. Uh, We will rotate our host, which is why at the beginning I said that I was the inaugural host. Um, You know, because life kind of gets in the way and it can be crazy and sometimes it's not easy for everyone to get together. Um, However, there will be times when we get together. So please keep an eye out for those episodes and please, please, please tune in. Um, We would welcome your support. So as a general warning... In terms of our language use and the topics that we discuss, we will endeavour to remain PG in our language, topic, etc. You know who you are. This this (laughs) may not be possible. Um, And as one of my fellow brood members have just said, you have been warned. (laughs) We are all incredibly passionate about professional wrestling. And sometimes we just speak from the heart. And I'm sure that I'm not, you know 
saying anything that people wouldn't agree with in the brood. And so one of them is just incredibly Scottish. <laughs> you've been warned. Um, I'm I'm a plastic scouser, so I'll just say what it what it is and just go on with it. Um, so officially, you guys have been warned. We will endeavour to try and label podcasts that are more on the sweary side as explicit, but obviously, don't do as I say, do as I do, and all that. Okay, so finally, just before I get onto the brood, I just wanted to take the time to say that this part is part of the wrestling with Jonna's family our sister podcast is the fantastic wrestling with Jonna's that we've all been involved Yay. in <laughs> so hi john well hi, done Jonna. hi people power <laughs> <laughs> Um, we just want to take a moment to thank John for the fantastic opportunity that he extended to ourselves to make this podcast happen. We're all very excited and I know that I'm a little nervous uh, to be bringing you this podcast and hopefully we will do the Wrestling With Jonna's uh, podcast proud. Okay, enough about me. Um, although, I might not. So, um, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> 15 more minutes of me yes, yes. <laughs> me me no i'm joking um so very very quickly i'll do the introduction and then you won't have to listen to me for a while um so as the host i'll go first with the formal introduction as i said earlier i am lexi helms i am the author of grappuccino thoughts which you can read on the with jonna's website and i've also appeared on the wrestling with jonna's podcast i think it's episodes 111 and 113 but i'm not sure uh, and I've been obsessed with wrestling and unfortunately disappointed my mother who thought it was a phase and that I'd grow out with it um, for over 30 years now and that is quite sobering I think I need to drink to get over that fact so I've said enough without further ado let's go round let's have all the members of the brood introduce themselves so I'm going to start in no particular order again with Grizz your turn um, I can kind of relate to what you just said there in terms of, oh yeah, my parents thought it was going to be a phase and that's why, you know, four days before my 30th birthday, I bought my first um, wrestling replica championship, which as you can tell, I keep sticking at the camera every five minutes or so because I'm that proud of it. He does, it's quite annoying. Yeah, you're just, it's just it's just annoying because you don't have it. You're jealous of people that can't see it, obviously on the audio, what can you describe what belt it is? It is the Undisputed Championship, the WWF edition, the last uh, mm. championship in the WWF era. And uh, arguably, in my opinion, the greatest looking world wrestling championship that has ever been created. Ooh, oh, God. Nice. Uh, so stay tuned for a future topic on <laughs> our favorite belts. Yeah. I'm just going to add that to the, uh, the list right now. And... <laughs> Yes, as she says, I am the Grizz. I am the reigning, defending, number one in the Big Johnny um, Brain Buster quiz. Uh, undefeated and never, well, someone's kind of scratched close to my record, but number one to take it, still number one, number one in everyone's hearts. And I, again, I've also been on the Wrestling With Genres podcast, obviously. Um, as I says, I was the inaugural person to take said quiz, and you can hear me in such episodes as... Uh, the second night of Wrestle Kingdom this year, where we covered the retirement retirement. I got distracted by that ghost sound in the background. Uh, the retirement of uh, Jushin Thunder Liger and others. Thank you very much, Grizz. Okay, so I am going to be going to uh, the jolliest member of our of our establishment, Michael. You are up. Hello. Uh, my name is uh, Michael Jolly. Um, you can find me on social media as Jolly the Bear. Um, I've also been on Wrestling with Jonna's uh, podcast uh, episode one two one, which was where we uh, decided to do a booking of Drew through to WrestleMania thirty seven, um, which was quite an interesting conversation. Very fun um, episode. Thank you. Um, however, certain things have changed because of the releases. Um, but we just tried to have a bit of fun with it instead of just doing your generic thing. Um, I would have liked to have seen a, a three-man band, three-player match between them all as a blow-off, but 
obviously it hasn't happened. Um, for me, I've been um, a fan of wrestling since we got Sky TV, which was 87, 88 maybe. Um, and watched it ever since. I've gone through the good times, the bad times. Um, huge wrestling fan, uh, as in WWE, WCW. Um, I love my British wrestling scene. Quite new to the New Japan scene. Um, only just started watching that, like maybe last two, three years. And then obviously AEW from the start. Um, Impact, TNA, all through that. Through the, um, the good times and bad times with Hulk Hogan and which was uh, lovely. Um, and my, my best part was obviously the beginning of 2000s with when you had like the SmackDown 6. Um, obviously, we'll go into more over different episodes and over uh, this episode as well. But yeah, um, I do quite a lot of promoting online on social media off my own back just to do my part because, yeah, that's it really. Fabulous, thank you very much. So, next one, and I think he's just taken a swig. It is <laughs> Mr. Big Chucky T, Chris. Hello, it is so good to be here. I am hyped, I am pumped, like Mojo Rawley, but a little Stay less hyped. sober, I imagine, right now. So, yeah, I'm ready to get into this. Uh, like you guys, much like I just, you know, what Johnny said, a lot of that resonated with me. Also, a fan since Sky TV was in the gist in this wonderful country of ours um ups and downs again you know shoot me down but i've stepped away from dodery for the last like year or so but i've focused a lot of time on AEW and new japan which i adore now so for me this has been a really interesting time where i've kind of moved on to something else um you know much like you guys you know ups and downs like you said throughout the years but there's so much out there for everyone right now. I actually think, in a way, this is the best time to be a fan. So, yeah, really excited to be here and talk about it. The time is perfect. Let's just do this. I'm, I'm ready. Excellent. Thank you very much. Okay, so I am going to be going to the happiest member of the brood, just mm -hmm. because he's happy to be here. Matt, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm, I'm Matt, and uh, I am very happy to be here. Um, so I think the same as everyone. So I've picked up WWF probably when I was about 10 years old. Um, so like a long time ago now, like nearly 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and like I followed WWF for a while and like WCW. And then I kind of lapsed for a while, then kind of dipped into it every now and again. And what, what really sparked me back into wrestling was sort of like getting introduced to like British wrestling through like FWA. Uh, I think one of the first matches I saw was Nathan Cruz um, and RJ Singh. So it's you know, not a bad way to start and got to meet other people throughout. Then just kind of realised how big of, um, big of a thing British wrestling was, especially local to me in Birmingham. Um, so I followed people and, you know, I'd seen like Pete Dunne come up for working in like uh, working men's clubs and stuff to where he is now. And, um, <clears throat> and then kind of got back into sort of like WWE and, and stuff in the last few years. Um, same as everyone else, I've been on uh, been on Big Big Johnny's podcast a few times. Um, he's actually one of the people that got me back into WWE from when I was like work with him. So uh, we can blame Big Johnny for that one. And uh, uh, but yeah, just you know, happy to sort of like be here and be involved in this, um, getting to meet you guys, and then sort of you know putting this out there and hopefully growing growing the brand a bit further. Excellent. Thank you very much, Matt. Okay, so hopefully this will go as well and I do apologise in advance, cover your ears if you're listening through headphones. We are last to be introduced to the fabulous Jason! Jason! There you go. Thank, yeah. thank, you, thank you very much for that. <laughs> Jason! 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 Maybe somebody explain where that comes from because some people like me might have never heard that game before. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, who wants to explain it? Oh, I, I guess I guess I give him it, so I should probably explain it. Yeah, it's it, it is from uh, Heavy Rain, um, <clears throat> the game for the PS3, and then remastered on the PS4 for extra Jason action. Um, <laughs> uh, so near the beginning of the game, you you lose your child in a shopping mall, and it's 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 became <laughs> a, like a great game. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It is, to be fair. It's not. It's, it's it's hardly a game exactly as a living living with a dead kid simulator. Um, 
Uh, spoil- spoilers in the first five minutes. Jason dies. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then you know, uh, um, that's not happening on this podcast. Um, so- yeah, because we're, yeah. we're at least we're at least twenty minutes in. Yeah. So, so we'll let. I'll I'll pick up from there if I can. Uh, yeah, the- that was pretty much it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, do I, um, I? I think I had a friend who what, had Sky Sports and would watch wrestling uh, from there. Um, but I do the, the fondest memory is my dad buying me a VHS from a car boot sale of Hulkamania Rules, and I, I think I watched that over a million times. I mean, uh, you know how old videotapes used to be? You'd have to pull out the tape and wind it yourself at times, didn't you? So uh, you watched it, uh, Wrestling Committed. Until we got to about uh, secondary, and I was told that it wasn't cool to be a wrestling fan when you were at secondary school. Uh, that lasted for a year. Um, and uh, so, But I came back because um, I'd flicked on it. It must have been the night after, like, uh, WrestleMania 13, because Brett was making friends with Owen and Davy Boy. And I remember saying to my dad, because we had Sky now, I went, oh, they're all friends now. This is all, this is different, this is. And then from there, pretty much watched it. Um, but what really helped was ECW. I uh, used to get the VHSs of those um, every month they came out, and I, I was absolutely hooked on that. Uh, I, I mean, we, we have mentioned in the past the German channel where you'd get WCW as well. Um, but, yeah, so I, I used to watch that and those type of things. But, uh, yeah, from secondary onwards, just committed hardcore fan from there on. But, but yeah. Um, recently, I think similar to you, Jolly, in um, – New Japan, probably four years, if that. I'm very new to that. I always knew it existed. Um, but the idea of actually keeping up with who's who and being able to say I've been to one of their shows and such like that. I did that a couple of years ago. Um, yeah, so Which one did you go to? Pardon? Which one did you go to? Uh, the one at uh, Doncaster. The one with Ring of Honor? Uh, yes. Uh, it was a nice ring, I think it was. Uh, it's a, the, the arena is. I don't know. I think it was working uh, with. Where Bully Ray was with. Um, um, what's his name? Um, is it Judge Martinez? Where he did Punishment. the. Six- Thank you. Punishment Martinez. They did the six man tag with. Um, with Bully Ray. And then it was Dalton Castle. I think it were in the two, two lads. I remember that one. It was like on a Sunday night. Uh, I know what. Walter was on the on the card, and uh, well, Carter was on the card as well. It was a few of us. I mean, it was a good show. It was a very yeah. good show. But anyway, yeah. So um, that's that's the newest one. I'm uh, kind of I, I, I'm UK stuff. I, I know very little, even though I've been to Rise. That's about my uh, limit on UK wrestling. Okay. Oh, um, uh, just before we go on, see when you used to watch uh, WCW on like the German channel. Did you think it was German? <laughs> No. <laughs> when you heard Frankenstein? No, 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 me. If if I was watching that at, at that time, I would think, man, this German wrestling is really weird. Why is everybody from America? Well, I used to stay up late on a on a Friday night um, watching Raw, and then it would I would switch between Raw and watching WCW when it's yep. when um, Cartoon Network switched over. Mm, yes. So I'd so I'd switch between both. And then I randomly, I stayed up late because I, at the time I lived in a pub and I stayed up late and it was like two o'clock in the morning. And at that time, you didn't have the way that the layout was now. Mm-hmm. So we've, you had like nine channels, but they were spread over like 50 yeah. channels. Yeah. And I all of a sudden just came across this, oh, what's this? And it's WCW, I think it was um, Halloween Havoc. And it, has, it had English, it had American commentary on it. But yeah. then... Literally about a second afterwards, it would have German commentary. Yeah, about, yeah. Oh, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, I that, do remember that. that. Yeah, for sure. I, I um, have a video yeah. somewhere. And, and here comes the dusty sting! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think somewhere in, in the world at my parents' house, I have um, a video of King of the Ring 92, or mm-hmm. possibly Royal Rumble 92, that was taped from RTL. And it was really weird, because you'd see Shawn Michaels start talking, and then a second later, this person would speak over him in German. And <laughs> That's not great, kid. I was only little, and I genuinely thought that he was getting told off. But for <laughs> the scandal, <laughs> so it was um, a ventriloquist, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, and also as well, if you used to watch Nitro on Cartoon Network, they used to play Space Ghost, Coast to Coast, mm-hmm. just yeah. for, and like. 
we didn't have Adult Swim, all right? And Space Ghost has sort of been taken up into the Adult Swim world. So I lost my shit when I saw <laughs> Space Ghost. And I was like, oh, my God. And my other half just looked at me and was like, what? And I was like, seriously, I used to watch this. I never used to understand it, but I used to watch it <laughs> before Nitro. That was like my cue. Um, so, yeah, it, it, good times. Good memories. <laughs> good times. Right. Um, right. So without further ado, guys, should we go into this week's topic? Yeah, sure go ahead. Sorry, topics. Oh. So um, usually at this sort of thing, we would do a new segment. But because all six of us are on, because it's our very first episode, uh, we wanted to just dedicate time to the two main topics that we have. Um, our topics for this week are what got you into wrestling and what is your favourite match? Um, so, I'm not going to start this time. I am going to hand over to Jason! Hello! So, the question is, what got you into wrestling? Uh, well, I, I touched upon it earlier, um, but I had a, uh, a, f- uh, a friend of my mother's, and uh, she was uh, recording Sky Sports. She she said, oh, I think Jason might like this. It was kind of a throwaway comment. I don't even know why she assumed I would. Uh, but she'd recorded um, WrestleMania. Uh, I'm trying to think of my numbers now. I'm pretty sure it was seven. That's Ultimate Warrior against Macho Man. But this is the bit that's going to make people confused as to the bit that i remember most of all is um sherry beating up macho man at the end of it and elizabeth coming to save her and i don't know why it's my earliest memory of wrestling and from there just watching it uh, continuously um i do remember uh, like a recording of uh, SummerSlam 92 and stuff like that um but i think it was hulk hogan it definitely was for me i i think i watched every hulk hogan match and I had the um, the double box of WrestleMania 4, um, if you remember that one. That was a double VHS for those of you who are... And a VHS tape used to be a, an old <laughs> video that we put into a machine. Um, but, uh, one VHS? <laughs> the ones where you opened, it, the ones where you opened it like that. And you yeah, had yeah, that was the one, yeah. 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 <laughs> You can't see this. People can't are miming it. And when you open the book, the book has two, I'm assuming they're going to either be brightly coloured or black because that was probably the only colours that you could get that plastic in. So yeah. think the brightest neon green or yellow you can get or unless the blackest you, black that you yeah, can un- get. Unless you got Rugrats, the movie on uh, VHS, which was orange. Yeah. <laughs> but you see, that was way after. But um, essentially, it was a big plastic thing, about A5 size, that went into this machine, and it was a pain in the arse if it chewed it. Let's move on. Thanks, technology. <laughs> uh, but no, uh, that was, I mean, Hulk Hogan from there. Um, I, I mean, I remember watching, and actually, I love the idea that Hulk Hogan went to, turned to a bad guy. Mm. Um, that was another thing that was really big for me, because I was just like, oh, wow. And now he's hanging around with, at the time, it, in my mind, it was Diesel and Razor Ramon, because I couldn't get my head around, even though I wasn't really, I I think I knew wrestling was fake and a work or uh, stuff like what? this. What? Uh, what? <laughs> what? 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 Get off. going at you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I still hadn't got my head around that people had different names. I still hadn't got that totally mm-hmm. in that his real name was Kevin Nash. I was like, what? What do you mean? His name's Diesel. What are you talking yeah. about? Um, so but I love the idea that he turned back and that made him so much cooler. And then lastly, I would add, um, I was totally, Stone Cold was, was just the best. I absolutely love Stone Cold. Uh, but I don't want to keep waffling. I'll uh, let somebody else tag in at this point. Thank you very much. I am going to tag in J- uh, Grizz. Oh, Thank shit. you, Jason. So the so, hot tag there. Good. Go ahead. I wasn't expecting that to happen. <laughs> okay. We're set so. the fucking order. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, you're really keeping us on our toes here, I must admit. Um, so I actually started watching in 2002. So I was I was 12 years old when I started, which was a lot later than the average wrestling fan around my age because I missed, or I, it depends on when you want to consider the Attitude Era actually ending. Uh, 
But I, I would consider that 2002-2003 the weird tail end transitional attitude era. Um, and I think pretty much as soon as uh, they got the F out was when uh, they completely went in a different direction. But the first pay-per-view that I've ever actually seen was uh, back in back in the day when WWF used to have pay-per-views on Channel 4. Uh-huh. And yeah. uh, it was like there was only three, wasn't they? In the end, right? yeah, yeah, because Channel Four didn't like uh, the amount of blood um, <laughs> and make young friends. Yeah, <laughs> old women's chest. Even though it was shown at one o'clock in the morning, and they have horror movies on, but because it was a sport, they only had three, and then they left it after that. <laughs> oh man, and the fact that they had adverts during, yeah, and you got them a week or a week after. Yeah, but um, so so my my friend showed me um, the the Royal Rumble two thousand, and then I was like, I just love the concept of this Royal Rumble match. It's like this this match is amazing. Did they do this all the time? And he's like, mm-hmm. oh, they do about once a year. So I, that was probably about let's say probably the tail end of like two thousand one, um, going into two thousand two. So when he showed me that, it's like I don't know, I may start following it because he's like, oh, the the, the, the Royal Rumble. Uh, um, 2002 is coming up like in a, like a month or two, and it's like, oh, maybe I'll just start watching and then maybe see if I can get it. And then, so I got up on Saturday morning at like nine o'clock in the morning, as it used to be when SmackDown used to be on uh, Sky One, yeah. <clears throat> and uh, started watching that for a period. And then they were starting to build up these big returns like Goldust and Val Venus and Mr. Perfect in the 2002 Rumble, yeah. and then. Uh, just um, went on and I asked uh, asked my mom and dad, "Can we get one of the one of the repeats, like, so we can watch it at a proper time?" And so we we all oh, sat we all sat <laughs> we all sat up on like Friday, Friday night. I think, I think it started about eight or nine o'clock or something, and then uh, we we sat and watched the whole thing. And of course, they were bored shitless. Up. Oh. Uh, they 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 were born and I loved every second of it and um, brought me to the man I am today with my belt. Look <laughs> at my belt. What a man! What a man! <laughs> hey, two thousand two was the the year that this belt came around. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I think it is. I think you're right. There you go. Uh, you it's fun. full circle. Oh my god! I didn't even realize. <laughs> there you see. There you go. Right on that note, I feel that. Uh, we should go to Michael next, but I'm worried that Grizz might take your your title of jolliest member of the team here. So you're gonna have to wow us in the next bit. So over to Michael. <laughs> what got you interested? Um, well, to be honest, I remember being at school and they used to bring the um, WWF magazine. Um, that was the first time I ever saw it. Um, and then I remember being told that we got Sky Sports. So you'd flick through the channels, and the first view of it was when TV channels were encrypted. Mm-hmm. So you wouldn't see a picture; it'd be just a fuzzy oh, screen, static. like a really old, exactly. But you yeah. could hear it. Yeah. So, uh, which ha- obviously happens with certain um, adult channels in the in uh, the day. That's not um, even near as fun, though. That's the <laughs> But Someone say it, that those were the first wrestling podcasts. Yeah, they could have been. <laughs> but because you couldn't pay, if you didn't pay for the show, you could hear it, but you wouldn't be able to see it. Um, and then luckily enough, soon after we having had Sky Sports, we, um, I was able to see it properly. Um, I think, oh, do you know what? I actually can't remember the earliest time I watched it. Um I just watched, I just remember as soon as I could watch it, I just watched anything, whether it be uh, WWF, whether it be on Sky One, or, um, and then when um, Cartoon Network came around and then switched to WCW, I would watch WCW from, I think it was from 8 till 9, and then watch Raw from 9 till 11, but because Nitro was still going, I would then switch over to Nitro. And just watched the last hour. So, um, yeah, I loved it. I've loved it ever since. Um, 
I, I, there's too there's too much to say regarding the highs and lows of wrestling. You know, there's always a slump. Um, well, but yeah, we'll leave that for another. Yeah, there'll episode. be plenty of other episodes to talk about that. Yeah. But yeah, um, again, like with was... like with Jason, yeah, like with Jason, love Stone Cold Steve Austin. <laughs> um, I, thought, I thought he was one that helped WWE yeah. um, get them yeah. figures back. Um, but then again, I loved the NWO before it got really, really over oversaturated. I just thought at that point, um, yeah, really, really good. Um, I love, I love what's going on now with the scenes, uh, the indie scene, um, very big into me British wrestling. Um, and as I said before, I'm slowly learning a bit more about New Japan, um, thanks to uh, Ring of Honor's with Bullet Club um, a few couple of years ago. Um, and Cody and that, so yeah, um, I love it. I'll even I'll I'll watch it and love it even if there's a low point. So I'm happy with that. Excellent, thank you so much. Right, we are going to go to Mister Chris Chocky T. So, have you finished your drink? Are we I ready have. to go? Is it the floor? No, not spill. I mean, it's just literally put to the floor. <laughs> in the safe space. All right, it's the safe space. I'm so drunk, uh, you fell off my chair. <laughs> what got me interested right so sky tv we basically all owe some gratitude to that but it sounds like except for grizz who's like a baby <laughs> didn't until much later on but yeah i was lucky enough to be one of the first people in my neighborhood actually with sky um and like a lot of my generation when i wasn't religiously watching the simpsons like wrestling <laughs> love um i can't remember exactly what got me into it but i remember like vividly like mr perfect and his yellow and blue like so like singlet, you know, and like old more warrior obviously running down. When I was young, my absolute favorite was the excellence of execution, Mr. Bret Hart. Um wow. I had there's a picture somewhere that exists. I've got the shades, I've got the leather jacket, the, the whole <laughs> deal. Um we need to get sharing <laughs> it'll be there somewhere. So, you know, I was lucky enough to be at SummerSlam 1902, obviously Wembley. Oh hell yeah. Oh. Yeah. I was the only guy in the crowd, I swear, cheering for Brett. Uh, apart from maybe my brother who was with me. Uh, everyone else was a big David Boy Smith fan. I understand that. I was disappointed he did not win. Uh, but my mum did buy me and my brother some sweet foam Legion of Doom shoulder pads. So, oh, wow. Yeah, so there you go. And I only just found them recently. Huh? Do you still have them? Oh, uh, probably. Oh, you need <laughs> It'll be like shoulder. They'll fit one shoulder. something to get rid of. Think you need to put that on the social media. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and it was I'm only just, recently... Uh, I've just had an idea now, like the, the way that you're saying that you've dressed as Bret Hart. What we yeah. should do is uh, in October, whenever our episode drops, we all have to come fancy yes. dressed. That's right. <laughs> but all, all six of us get to come back, but we all come back fancy dressed. I love yes. that. Yes. Um, so, yeah, I only just found out about Hawk being wasted at that SummerSlam match, thanks to the Dark Side of the Ring uh, from Legion Team. So, yeah, a bit of a twist there for me. But yeah, that's me. Always loved it. Um, <laughs> There's not really a lot to say about it. I felt like I whole spent my whole life defending it, but obviously with the increase of like the internet age, I found more and more people were like me, mm -hmm. and so you know I don't actually even know anyone personally that's a fan. You know, it's it's nearly all like kind of online. You know, maybe a couple of guys I know. So yeah, it, it's really good to kind of have that and be here. That's like it. Appreciate it with you guys. So yeah, that's me. Nice. Thank you very much. So we are going to go over to the man that's happy to be here, Matt. <laughs> what got you into wrestling? Um, so I want to follow up with Chris and like, say Chris, Bret Hart, really. Um, the the first the first time I saw WWF was I think it was like a Bret versus Owen match, which is a pretty decent way of starting off your uh, your sort of like your wrestling career. So, um, so yeah, so I kind of got like follow Bret mostly like into the attitude era and, and then sort of like kept going through that really um fortunate enough a few years ago to be able to meet brett uh well it's fact it's almost nine years ago now my son was only like two months old i've got a picture of like um me with brett brett's holding my my sort of like few week old son oh, and wow. i've got oh. i've got his winged eagle belt on so um where, where was that can i ask and um, that was at the memorabilia show at the nec in birmingham mm. oh, oh wow. wow excellent uh, I got, I got to sort of like spend a bit of time with Brett and, and have a chat with him for a while. The um, National Indoor Arena? Uh, no, uh, NEC. Uh, 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 I, thought that was, I thought that was where they recorded Gladiators. Um, 
I think they did it in our yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> that that was that was my that was my other thing growing up, and that was pretty much like wrestling when you think about it. <laughs> yeah. You got me thinking about Jet and I, though. That's the thing. I'm just <laughs> well, apparently, I met I, I met Jet as a child. I don't remember him, but my dad seemed to have loved that day. Yeah, I'd imagine your dad. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, sorry, 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 John Pan, on you go, man. Um, yeah, and then and then sort of like like I mentioned earlier, sort of like started following, sort of like getting into British indie wrestling, and then it kind of got really hooked once I sort of like realised how much there was local to me. And it became like more of a social thing as well. That we'd meet friends, you'd make friends there and see them at different shows. And there's a lot of people I've met through wrestling over year over the years. I'm still quite close to, still still speak to regularly. Um, so you know, so it became social as much as anything. And then sort of seeing people develop and become like recognised names and stuff like that. You know, it's never a case of like I saw them first or I said they were good first. Some of them, I'm pretty sure it was me. That but, nice uh, humble brag. Yeah, pretty much. So, yeah. But, um, but yeah, but you know, so so that was really good, and and like that's you know, wrestling's how I sort of you know became like really good friends with Big Johnny, and and it's kind of all gone from there, really. So um, and then like meeting you guys and doing this podcast and stuff like that. So you know, it is quite a sociable thing, as yeah, much as entertaining in and of itself. Like that's why I do like the indie scene, is that you do see the same people and you can have a bit of a laugh, and you know, mm-hmm. it's more bit more intimate and absolutely yeah seen some big names pass through these little sports halls basically over the years and uh you know people like uha nation who's now apollo cruise so you know still in sports halls community centers quite a few times and now he's uh you know uh US title holder in wwe so you know it's not bad i got i got to see him quite a lot um at the preston city wrestling shows yeah. When he was on the when he was doing the UK scene. Did you see I got him pussy a lot at uh, no. PCW? <laughs> that's that's what that's what I heard. I I Just ask him. someone to repeat something rather than guess what they said. <laughs> no, no, I, I I would much rather guess because it's much more fun that way. I got to see him face um Hardcore Holly, which mm. was a really, really good match. Um but yeah, I I I've got so much um respect for him and I hope his push currently in WWE works and I'm quite interested to see if this faction works as well yeah Agreed. so that's cool is it yeah well thank you very much guys um I suppose what's left is me and that when we were doing inter- introductions I felt a bit left out and I was like I haven't mentioned like what promotion I am so I am predominantly WWE and this is the reason why. Um, one of my earliest memories is doing what toddlers do, getting involved in things that I shouldn't be getting involved in, demanding parents' attention. The only difference with that scene is we were on holiday in America, and um, I was basically told, go and sit next to your brother and go and watch TV with him, which, 90s parenting, woo! <laughs> um, and I think that it's well, more than anything not, else. Not, not really much has changed. If you see any like parents on the buses these days, like they just hand their kids an iPad. It's like, here, watch this and shut up. Please mm-hmm. be reminded that these views work. are our own views and do not reflect the work <laughs> <laughs> of the With Jonas podcast. Um, no, I'm joking. Chris, is, Chris <laughs> just thought his daughter had to slam dunk at an early age. So, you know, it's uh, it's it's not all just sitting in front of iPads. Oh, yeah, okay. the girl's got talent. Yeah, he loves the outdoors. Well, who knows? Who knows? Maybe he just uh, got to hold uh, an iPad for hours and watching videos of people slam dunking. She just learned it from it. You don't know. You don't know. (laughs) Anyway, (laughs) sorry, it's all right. Um, and one guy stood out, and it is the Ultimate Warrior. Ah. Um, please bear in mind, though, gents and listeners, I couldn't have been more than two and a half. Um, and this guy looked badass. He had bright colours on him, and he ran around like a maniac. <laughs> Got shit done, left. Uh-huh. What is not to like? Got shit done. You know, he, he really did. Like, it might not be the prettiest of wrestling matches. You're not but wrong. Yeah. yeah, you're not wrong. Um, so, yeah. Um, and I, I can't remember a time where I didn't have wrestling in some form in my life 
So it's interesting that we were all sharing stories about the old encrypted Sky channels because uh, I had the same thing. Um, I also remember WCW, I think it was Saturday night, being shown on ITV at like lunchtime on a Saturday. Um, Crash bangs. Remember bullet. that? Um, with the blue, the blue ring with the blue mats and the <laughs> yellow circle in the middle. Um, mm. So yeah, I remember watching that and going, "This hasn't got who normally is on it." Because I didn't realise that there was different promotions. Um, and then I did the whole Cartoon Network thing, and after Cartoon Network changed to TNT, I watched Nitro, and my my preference during the Monday Night Wars was Nitro because I could actually see it rather mm. than just listen to it. Um, but then SmackDown was put onto Sky One. And uh, yeah, went from there. Um, and I've stuck by it, and I've been very, very proud to say, "Look at me! I'm a wrestling fan." And you know, I I'm certainly the only female that I can recall walking around on non-uniform days in stone cold t-shirts or you know, evolution shirts or whatever. Um, I once got asked as well. I have a blue Shane McMahon shirt, and uh, on the back it has the money. Mm-hmm. And uh, I remember walking down the corridor and hearing the head teacher shout me and I was thinking, oh my god, I'm going to get in so much shit for this. And I was like, everything all right, sir? And he's like, yeah, what does it say on your back? The money or the monkey? (laughs) And I was like... Yes, the monkey, Shin McMahon. Here comes the monkey! (laughs) 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 It sounds on things, actually. Um, No, no, big love to Shane O'Mark. I love that man. Um, Agreed. So yeah, um, as I've sort of gotten older, I have stayed predominantly with WWE. I flitted about with TNA sort of mid 2000s, late 2000s to sort of the early 2010s. Um, I have just started to discover the indie scene and stuff like that. Um, I have. Um, fallen in love with NXT um, purely because it, for me it's the best thing that WWF or WWE put out on a weekly basis um, I absolutely adore Yushin Liger so when my memory of him was through WCW so that's how I sort of knew about Japan and stuff so I'm trying to catch up with that um, can I just can I just tell you about um, Liger? Um, so you like Liger, don't you? I love Liger. Yeah. I got to watch him live at PCW when PCW so did, did, I. A, did a uh, Ring of Honor stroke and uh, New Japan show. It was like like how the uh, Ring of Honor New Japan did a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. They did it before, so they had uh, quite a lot of people, and I. And even AJ Styles was there and stuff like that. And Amazing. I must admit, watching Liger then and even now, I was just blown away with how old he is and how agile he is. Yeah. He just, you'd have loved it. I'm sorry, but you'd I'm, have loved I'm quite it. surprised, uh, Michael, that we never met, considering how many uh, PCW shows I went to over my time. <laughs> but I <laughs> think that like, you probably would have known me because I am that one loud drunk annoying scottish guy that goes to every pcw show it was quite yeah. a few yeah, he deliberately avoided that person all the time <laughs> oh no now, now he's trapped in a podcast with him <laughs> <laughs> right. can i just can i just ask um what um when you say you like you've just recently got into the indie scene yeah. What what indie scene do you mean? Do you mean British? Do you mean um, like Evolve or... Um... Yeah, both. So okay. like, I've started to watch the likes of Progress over the bank holiday weekend at the beginning of May, I think it was. Um, they released Super 16, Super Strong Style 16 from last year on YouTube. And, and can I just say, during this episode that we're taping, they're actually showing one on YouTube right now. What? I'm I'm going. I'll see you later, lads. No, I'm joking. <laughs> let's just live stream it now. Yes. Sorry. Let's let's watch it. No, I'm joking. Um, because I think I've already dropped too many swears already, and I don't want to get in trouble with Big Johnny. So, um, so yeah. So, um, so, yeah. Um, what about ICW? Go on. Sorry. 
What about ICW? I have dabbled in and out with it. I haven't found something that makes me go, I have to tune into this constantly. Yeah. Um, and I don't know, you know, I'm not throwing shade on any promotion for that. It's just something that, you know, I mean, at the moment, before we started recording this podcast, I, with my partner, watched the Stadium Stampede match for the millionth time. Yeah. It was brilliant, wasn't it? It was so good. There's so many things about it that, yeah. you know, and I never thought that I would be in a position to say, actually, do you know what? Maybe I don't need WWE anymore. <gasps> <laughs> if if we look at if we look at in the light <laughs> if we look at the um the show or the episode or the match should I say which which do you prefer do you prefer the way that they did the stampede ma- uh, the stadium match do you prefer the boneyard match or do you prefer, prefer into the into cinema universe cinematic universe discussion oh. here I swear yeah, yeah. yeah I think oh, this is my hot topic later it's on I my was going to say I think this is a discussion <laughs> right. for another time um, so we will move very very swiftly on I'm not blocking Ooh. anyone we will discuss it at length <laughs> can I uh, can I quickly um, just bring out a few things before we get into our favourite match kind of uh, do um, okay, since we're all uh, British here, um, I have three things, that, as everyone was talking, that like kind of reminded me of things that happened um, in terms of wrestling. This is all something that I, I'm pretty sure that we all got a chance to see in some form or fashion. So I'll, I'll list them off one by one. We'll quickly go around and go, do you remember this? Do you remember the wrestling channel? Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. That channel is responsible for me knowing who AJ Styles, Christopher yeah. Daniels, mm-hmm. and Frank Kazarian were before they went on to TNA. Absolutely. Well, that's an old four two seven or something like that. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. Something along those lines. Yeah. yeah. I used to watch every TNA show that that came on religiously, like from the second I found it. I was like, "What is this? Oh my <laughs> god! I remember yeah. that guy." Did anyone um, watch ECW when it was on Bravo? Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's all right then. I'll, I'll, yeah. Ju- not just me then. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, number two. Number two was. <laughs> did you watch the run of uh, WOS a couple of years ago? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, I watched a few of them. Yep. Yeah. 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 We wait. Yeah. I yeah. yeah. couldn't get into it. Yeah. Watched, yeah. watched the New Year Eve show and then obviously the run, which. Which um, was actually showed. Uh, it was actually all right. It showcased quite a few good wrestling talent, which have now moved on to uh, better pastures. But I think they're they trying again with the really? uh, they're trying again to push it because I know they're pushing it a lot in India and America with the show that was already shown over here. Um, now, whether or not that is going to help produce some else, but because of having AEW on ITV four. I don't know if it's going to stop um, the British market or the British scene being able to be on ITV. I'm not sure how that's, that uh, how yeah, that works. That's what I was going to say. Like World of Sport was great. ITV have tried more than once to bring back wrestling, you know, to ITV, but now they have AEW. You know, now they've got that prize pig, right? So yeah, it seems unlikely, but yeah, I remember that. It wasn't all bad. It wasn't all bad. Perfect, perfect lead in there, Chris, to the, the last one. Um, because if you remember that before WOS, there was something else that they claimed was wrestling back on the television. <laughs> no, exactly where you're going with this. Does anyone remember celebrity wrestling? Yes. Bible Kate Lawler. Oh, that was that was the first time I ever seen Victoria Victoria Silverstead or whatever her name was. Yeah. I don't know if I know this. I know this. Now you make oh. me want to Google. Make it, me want to Google. Was it by Roddy Piper? Yeah, Roddy Piper was the host, and then D'Lo Brown and Joey Legend were uh, yeah. trainers, and they had like their own essential faction, and then they played uh, gladiator style games. Yeah. So they they were barely celebrities, and they definitely weren't wrestling. Does anybody remember the Hulk Hogan thing from... Yeah, oh my god, yes, oh my god. With, uh, Every with... episode of that garbage. Is that the yeah. one with the small people? No, that was, that no. was, uh, that was had, a different show, which sweeps. I also remember and watched all of, because I yes. watched everything. 
it had Screech from uh, Saved by the Bell in it. Um, and basically, Dan. yeah, and it basically every every week someone was eliminated, and it ended up being Dennis Rodman would win because it's yeah. his. Uh, but yeah, never was... sure if we're convincing people that wrestling's good. This is. On weird shows, you know, a... see, I think it was called. Is it Wrestling Society X? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was like heavy metal music and mm-hmm. just intensely fast matches. Uh, Teddy Hart was one of them, mm-hmm. and Jack Jack Evans, I think, was in there. But any That's more than that, as well, it was like an explosion yeah. of electric at one point, and it was it was just <laughs> wild. Uh, yeah. Oh my god! Like I've watched none all of these, these are good shows. shows. We, we want to clarify; they're not they good. Were, no, they were all excellent. You, you don't you lie to these people. They were all amazing, and if half of them were still around in the ether, because I don't think a lot of them are. Now, lads, um, you... lads, we're missing out the important one here. You haven't mentioned it at all. Rank a king? No. WCW on Channel Five with the. 60s Batman clonk appearing every time someone got hit with a chair. Oh wow. Now you see if you if you want to talk like fantastic wrestling programming, detect the sarcasm here. Um <laughs> yeah, seriously go and look it up on YouTube. It's hilarious because all of a sudden this massive cloud appears and it goes whack <laughs> and blam and pow and it's just hilarious. It's hilarious. Well the thing is with watching it on channel five is it all depended on where you could get it because not everyone could get channel five at that point in like 99 2000 and so it looked like you know when you're watching it uh, if it's snowing or it's raining outside and you get a really bad picture yeah it was like that yeah. so not now a lot see, of people were able to see it how many people got wrestler what, what? what sorry wow so because i grew up in wales hence the plastic scouser at the beginning bit. Um, I got a channel called S4C or S Pedwarech, which is the Welsh equivalent of Channel 4. So okay. it would be like Channel 4, but it would have Welsh content in it as well. So in the morning, the uh, kids' TV shows were all in Welsh and stuff like that. And then randomly, they'd have like wrestler. And that's literally how the guy used to say it. And it was independent wrestling from Wales. Um, and it was brilliant. I can't remember who was on it because I remember no watching way. it. Not having a clue because it was all commentated in Welsh. Probably yeah. Rob Teddy was on it. Probably. Mason Robin. There you go. Probably. <laughs> um, but yeah, I haven't seen it for ages. But me and my friends now will, you know, if we're drunk enough, we'll still go, Wrestler! At the top of our voices. So that's where that comes from. So yeah, it, it was good times. It's good times. But now that somebody somebody brought up the uh, the, uh, the the little people promotions, we have to also mention half paint brawlers and uh, micro championship wrestling because they were two completely different ones. I didn't uh, know there was that many. Oh my it. goodness! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> half paint brawlers was a lot more difficult to get hold of. But I seen a couple episodes, and like the first episode, uh, they were doing a show at a bar, and the ring didn't show up, so they just kind of had matches around the bar and then um one of, one of them did a frog splash off the bar through a table but it wasn't a standard table and then like uh, the the little person taking the the frog splash just slashed the back of their head like wide open like just <laughs> wide open and then the whole show had to be stopped because they needed to call the ambulance <laughs> my god right and then uh, can we pop the brakes on there and get back to it? Have no, fun editing this, John. Have fun editing this. Um, right. No, don't edit any of it. It's all great. It's all great content. <laughs> Are you sure? Yes. Are you sure. Right. Okay. Absolutely. I'm my drink yet. <laughs> I'm not sure anyway, so we're all right. <laughs> Who remembers Lucha, Lucha Libre USA? No. 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 no I'm going done. to ask Big Chucky T. Hello. Next topic. Okay, so I'm coming to you, Big Chucky T. Okay, what is your favourite match? Now, you you can't pick one. Why would you make me do this? Right, because I'm you... evil and I like to. Okay, well, you're not wrong. I, 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 no, I, I actually, I actually meant uh, Chucky T. Like you're yeah. not wrong. Uh, I, can... <laughs> I have like five swimming through my head right now. I was like, which one yeah. am I going to pick? It's going to be the first one that leaves my lips when it's my turn. I'm going to give you five. I'm going to have to. And then maybe I'll pick one. 
Right. Flair versus Michael's retirement match, right? Five words. I'm sorry, I love you. That is an emotional match for me. I oh, love yeah. it. That's fantastic. That super kick. I even tried to explain that moment to my wife. She was indifferent. But, you know, uh, <laughs> that moment, <laughs> that, that is wrestling for me. You know, it, it was amazing. Um, you mentioned Shona Mack. On that, Chucky T, yeah. what got me through that match, mm. and if you watch it on certain camera angles, there are a group of Evertonians, and I hope to God you're listening to this podcast because you got me through it because not only were you sat close to the front row in your Everton shirts, big respect to you, is you had a sign saying feed the yak and you were actually <laughs> chanting at one point feed the yak and he will score. Just thank you for getting me through that. I needed that. What does any of that mean? So basically, <laughs> we had a load of Everton fans, Everton Football Club fans in the crowd and they were chanting one of our chants that we usually chant to our players, which was Yakubu. So feed the yak, feed the yak, feed the yak and he will score. Um, and they had a sign saying it um, somewhere. Around, um, it had a performer at that show. Yeah, sorry. Um, you had a performer at that show, um, and then literally behind his head is like the the right okay, it's great, it's great. <laughs> Did they forget what sport they were going to see that night, or? <laughs> I, I don't get it. Like I, 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 like, I, I, I don't go to football matches and just start going. Let's go, Rollins. <laughs> Might catch on. No, but it got me through it because obviously, like we're having fans. I get it. I don't mean yeah, to be because like, I don't think it was Chandler Rollins team, right now. But it's you are, you are machine. aware of retired. Yeah, but like back in the day, like it was like, hang on a minute, they're they're my people. They like wrestling on Everton. What is this about? I was like, it is possible to find other people that are just as crazy as me. So anyway, sorry, I do apologise. Let's get back to it. I Number know, four on the list. Yeah, well, you've just ruined that now. Now I'm going to be thinking about yaks getting fed instead of super kicks. <laughs> the legends. Yeah. Thanks. Um, no, funny enough, that, that sign does ring a bell. I didn't know what it meant at the time. So thanks. It's all um, solving Solving riddles. Anyway. There you go. Full circle, like you said. Uh, next up, Shane and Mac, Kurt Angle, 2001, King of the Ring. Oh, hell yeah. What a match. Plexiglass. Oh, my God. Um, yeah, Shane can really, like, put out the bag when he wants to. It reminded me when he fought AJ at WrestleMania a couple of years yeah. ago. Yeah. He can do the business sometimes, although we got a bit oversaturated with Shane. Um, yeah, this was back when he had just, you know, save it once in a while. Terrific stuff. Um, TLC2, the match that furthered the innovation of the ladders, the tables and chairs. Um, that match had everything. Plus, it had like the third man in each team. So you had Spike Dudley, you had Rhino, you had Lita involved. And yeah. I love that match. And um, WrestleMania 17, obviously, mad respect to that. And then Omega versus Okada 1 um wrestle kingdom um the match that begun my borderline homoerotic affair with kenny omega um and the first <laughs> love it. Six of our match yeah that was a terrific match and it, it genuinely got me into kenny omega like it did a lot of people and th that led to new japan which led to all elite wrestling really so you know respect there um and then finally like this is really recently a little bit controversial but omega moxley from full gear because they went and people didn't think that they were going to do that kind of match on TV. And I don't know if you know, but they ended up getting a fine from like the local state commission because of the level of violence in that match. So, you know, yeah, I, I really respected that. So it really went out there and they kind of proved it. So there you go. That is by no means my top five. If I really had to pick probably Kurt Shane, because I watched that on the DVD I had like a thousand times. So. Plus no. also, I, I don't, know if, don't know if anyone mentioned it because I did step away for a second, but the fact that you got to remember that was Kurt Angle's third match that night. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, that's right. He was in the tournament. So, yeah, incredible. And um, um, the words, um, is that all you've got, pussy? Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. And I broke my tailbone, or I think I broke my tailbone. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Context, ladies and gents, there's a segment just before um, Shane goes through, I think it's the second plate of glass, mm -hmm. and Kurt tries to throw him through, and he bounces off again. And Kurt's like, we're gonna, we're gonna give up, we're gonna give up, we're gonna give up. And Shane is like, is that all you've got, pussy? And that's what pushes Kurt Angle to put him through the yeah. plexiglass. Um, I just have visions of the steam coming out of Vince McMahon's ears. Mm. 
as his reaction, but anyway. God so, damn it, I, I never wanted to hit my kid so much in my damn life. <laughs> Shane. Which kid? Paul or Shane? <gasps> oh, controversial. Sorry. Wait, what, wait, what, what are you trying to say? He doesn't want to hit Stephanie? He had a match with her where he choked her with a pipe. <laughs> The thing is, though, have you seen the tweets that go around? And I, I mean this, like, matter-of-factly. Have you seen the difference in tweets between his own son's birthday... Yes, and Triple H's. And yeah. Triple H's. And I'm like... <laughs> yeah. What? Oh, man, the, the, the one he said to Triple H is like, oh, thank you for all, all you do. You are such a... A massive a massive part of WWE and I, I, I love working with you every day. Happy birthday, Triple H. And then when it comes to Shane McMahon, it's like happy birthday, Perfect. Shane. <laughs> that well, a good one. <laughs> so I'm, I'm pretty anyway. sure they, they were like in like the same month or something. So that's why it was like very weird. It was like, wait, did you not just put gush over Triple H and then you're just like happy birthday, Shane? I think he's still salty over the fact that Shane said, nah, I'm not working for you anymore. See you later, I'm going to China. But that's a different issue for a different then, day. Yeah, you messed all that up. Yeah. Uh, anyway, it's a good job that Grizz interjected himself there because I'm going to come to you next. Oh, no. What is your <laughs> favourite match? Well, just like Big Chucky T, I have 17. Uh, so <laughs> it's the number 17. Is... The list of Grizz. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, we, we could do this for ages, and uh, as I said, like er, when this question came up, like just tons of matches um, came to mind. So, like just things like Jeff Hardy versus Undertaker ladder match, Raw two thousand two for the undisputed championship. For those of you listening, he keeps Never holding up the title that he has. Um, <laughs> so yeah. Um, I mean, but yes, great match. Uh, and then there was Shawn Michaels versus Chris Jericho, WrestleMania 19. Mm-hmm. Shinsuke Nakamura versus Sami Zayn at uh, uh, NXT yeah. TakeOver. Okay. Um, yeah, that was wicked. Yeah. Plus uh, that epic theme music, because I was I was so disappointed that um, I was never going to hear the New Japan uh, Pro Wrestling Shinsuke Nakamura theme again. But when he came out, to that music for the first time ever it's like this is a good replacement and i am completely okay with this and then he turned heel and then added lyrics to it which makes it even better because i love it even more but but if i had to pick one off of the illustrious uh list i might have to go for and if any of you um have seen this one absolutely chime in AJ Styles versus Shinsuke Nakamura in Wrestle Kingdom. Oh, that's, that's one off my match. list. Yeah. Oh. Solid. Yeah. I don't think I've seen it. What? Okay. It's out well, there. I've said it. I've you, said it. You, it's on my list now. Need, what you need to do is you need to come off this podcast, start recording right now, go to YouTube, watch it right now, <laughs> and then come back. Yeah, yeah we'll probably still be here. <laughs> yeah, probably will to be fair. <laughs> Excellent. So, why is it your favourite match? Well, um, obviously, I, I don't really know when um, when all yous kind of got into New Japan or if yous did. Like, obviously, some of yous are a bit more bit more experienced in New Japan than others. I've been. I was, you know what, I was into New Japan. I would probably say I'm not as much these days. I'm kind of following New Japan since they've came back from their hiatus due to uh, the COVID. But um, I started watching New Japan back when, um, you know, uh, Finn Balor was still still in the company. And uh, But I just, I was watching this match and then Shinsuke Nakamura came out and I was like, hold on a second. Who the hell is this guy? And like the guy just gripped me and I was like, okay, I think I might be in for the long haul because this guy is just like he his entrance is amazing, his theme music is amazing, his gear is amazing. Like he's uh, I'm not gonna lie, he's a <laughs> moderately attractive specimen, and I am <laughs> not of that, but keep it clean, Grizz, keep it yep, clean. Yep, absolutely. Um <laughs> 
and he's like absolutely fantastic in the ring like the the, the guy just sold, sold me in like one night like it was already like this guy this guy looks good this guy looks cool um as soon as he just came to the ring and then he had this barn burner of a match i was like oh my god that was amazing so then i just started following uh, new japan for that part and then aj style showed up I, obviously i've been i've followed uh, as i said like i've been following tna ever since uh, the wrestling channel i have practically never stopped following tna and um so this was pretty much the culmination of the two of my favorite wrestlers that weren't in wwe coming together for a match together and the the big fight feel that came to this match was i don't think i've ever experienced as much of a big fight feel since other than like maybe when they had that wrestlemania match and then that match um like uh pooped the bed mm. like because uh it didn't get out of second gear and then just ended and i was like but but Everyone was saying that was meant to be the best match mm-hmm. on the show, and it didn't happen. And then also, Asuka lost her streak that night, so I already hated that show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Chris. So, the next one, out, or the next person I'm going to go to, is our jolliest member. Michael, what is your favourite match and why? Um, I've got a couple. Um... Surprise, surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I actually really loved the uh, Chris Jericho versus Chris Benoit versus Kurt Angle match at WrestleMania 16. Yeah. Yeah. Matches. Um, Matches. It's, it's, it's an incredible match, and I know a lot of people don't want to talk about um, a certain Benoit, and I appreciate that, but you can't not knock his ability in the ring. No, um, no you can't. Um, to be honest, quite a lot of them are angle matches. I really enjoyed um, his Iron Man match with Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar. Yeah. Smart yeah. Um, oh, TV. what a amazing match that one was. That was, to be fair. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you, you could have probably listed any Brock Lesnar versus Kurt Angle match, and I would say I agree. Um, so, and then the other one is, as I said, I can't, like Chris said, I can't pick a, a favourite, but. One match that I did really, really like is um, the triple threat from TNA um, with Samoa Joe. Oh, uh, got that down. Yes. Yes. AJ, AJ Styles. Um, I just thought that was an incredible match and it helped, obviously, put eyes on the product. Um, but I would say if I'm going to... I can't pick any one particular, but I'd say they'd be my top three. So... I just, I just thought each match. I, I like the, um, the mat wrestling type of style. I don't mm-hmm. get me wrong. I like flips in that, yeah. um, but I just thought the, the, um, the way that they work together, the psychology, just everything about each match. Even the, with the chair shots from Brock on Angle, I get some people were like, "Oh, it's not real Iron Man match," but um, I just thought just how they played it out was very, very, very good. Excellent. I agree with you on that one. Thank you. Right then, I am going to go to Jason. 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 (laughs) Jason. (laughs) So I'm going to uh, steal the uh, multiple Uh, favourite matches matches. uh, theme that's going on. I've noticed Uh, a theme. uh, So I would say... uh, So not from a, a wrestling standpoint, but from nostalgia and it was just... When I watched it live, because um, I was living in Canada, uh, it was Rock versus Hogan. And um, the Hulkamania came, came out, and I always loved The Rock, and that those two fighting together was was amazing. Um, it wasn't the best wrestling match, but the, the short period it was, it was awesome. Mm-hmm. I already had the TNA match down on my list, um, because I was a big Samoa Joe fan when he was in Ring of Honor. And so then when... He came into TNA, and the way they were pushing him, I was like, this guy's brilliant, this is. Um, we, so we, can both that... have, we can both have the same match. I've got Austin against Brett, um, WrestleMania 13. Um, I've never se- I don't know if... I can't recollect a double turn 
in a match like that and, uh, since then. And actually, just the Dolph whole Ziggler drama. Dolph Ziggler about the real. Pardon? Dolph Ziggler versus Rebel the real. Yeah. Good shout. Maybe. I mean, like, it's 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 absolutely it's absolutely not the same, but it was a <laughs> it was a double turn, and it's everybody a, everybody after that match related it to the Austin and Brett turn. But yeah. you know, nobody remembers it because Alberto Del Rio was involved, and he's scum of the earth. <laughs> <laughs> that Brett uh... Stone Cold match that was the blow off, wasn't it? Because obviously they'd seen the first each of its Survivor Series, mm-hmm. and then first each of it WrestleMania with. Um, Ken Shamrock obviously he bled and passed out. Mm. I thought that was a really, really good way to put him over. But I yeah, mean, he's still, yeah he's, he's still yeah. lost, and he was further over by the loss. Um, mm. I mean, it was it was superb. Um, then I've got a couple of others. Um, RVD versus Jerry Lynn from ECW Living Dangerously. If you've not nice. seen that, um, I'd never seen, never heard of RVD, and then I put this. VHS on and I was just like this guy moves like gravity doesn't relate to him and it was it was amazing um I was a big sure I am a big Shawn Michaels fan I there's less psychology in RVD's matches than there is um Shawn Michaels but I, I always loved RVD because I was just like he can do he seems to be able to do anything uh and his matches with Jerry Lynn um uh, we, we just got better and better counter holds that type of thing and then the last one um, and I, I, I still keep coming back to it because the one I send to people is I went, this is great wrestling, and it's uh, Sasha Banks against Bailey at Takeover. Um, yeah, boy. It, it just looked like two people who wanted like... to win the match. Or just it was brilliant. It was so competitive. Um, I, and, and and I mean the idea that at one time when people would say, oh, it's a women's match. Now that's not even on the, the card. It's just is one of the best matches I think I've seen. It's just uh, a match that happens to be by women. Yeah, and yeah. it was brilliant. It was br- it was. Um, I mean, I can't believe that they haven't let a feud on the main roster properly, um, because if they do something like they did in AXT, I mean, it would be it was just gold. It was such a good match. The second one, the Iron Woman match, wasn't as good. But it still was a very it was still good pretty match. great though. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. So that would be my uh, kind of group there. But yeah, mm. that would be my top. There were some five. very good choices there. So Thank you. Fair. Right. Right. Well, we're now going to go to the happiest person in the room, and that is Matt. Matt, what is your favourite match? I think most people have said most of mine already. So um, <laughs> I think just like cover off some of what other people have said, like the, that Bailey um, Sasha match was um, obviously anyone that knows me knows that I like Bailey just a little bit. Um, <laughs> really, just a like, little bit. This is that to me. Like, been to NXT. <laughs> I've not really watched a great deal um, before that point. So um, so that was kind of what really hooked me in um, and got me watching it reg- more regularly. Um, like Chris mentioned, like the TLC match, um, you know, that whole feud between the three tag teams, there's so many good matches in that. Even when it was like the Hardys against um, Edge and Christian, when it was the, the original Money in the Bank match, where there was an actual bag no, with money. No in Mercy it. Land oh, match, yeah, that was good. Yeah. The Terry you know, Invitational you, you, Tournament. That, that was, yeah, yeah. So like, all, all that just paved the way for, for what we see now. And um, so all those matches were, were amazing. Uh, Brett against Stone Cold, I agree. That's that's definitely up there. But I think sort of like, I've been racking my brains with it because like most of the ones I've come up with were obvious choices. Um, and I was trying to think of some like um, stuff matches that I've actually seen and actually been like and been at and witnessed. Yeah. Um, but it's you know a lot of them and they all kind of merge into one. So it's uh, I think you know in terms of like WWE, um, there's the WrestleMania 10 ladder match. Um, with yeah. Sean and Razor. Yeah. Uh, that was like the first time I'd ever seen a ladder match or anything like that. And it's like, you know, I was blown away by that. It's still one of the best ladder matches that you can watch. Um, sticking with HBK, you know, you know, these matches against The Undertaker. Yeah. Uh, one that's not necessarily Absolutely. not a good wrestling match as such, but from an entertainment point of view, um, HBK against Hulk Hogan. Oh, no, that is the greatest wrestling match ever filmed. Yeah. <laughs> no, that was oh, Edge versus God. Randy Orton last weekend. 
no, 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 they're lying to you, Grizz. They have brainwashed you. Well, Trust no one said me. that, did they? It's interesting. No, they told me, and I believe them. <laughs> oh, but then you believe the lies. So you believe that I'm a size six. I'm sorry to jump in, but I. Uh, I'm sorry to jump in, Matt, but you know, like we were on about with HBK. HB Shizzle? Does anybody remember the Raw match? Against Shelton Benjamin. Yeah. When oh hell yeah! The Gold that Rush tournament. Kicked him out the air. So yeah, the that breaks, like, short, yeah. If you go back through the last twenty-five years, thirty years, whatever, you know, Sean's going to be in most people's top five, top ten matches. Definitely, you know. It's like, yeah, the, the matches will change, but the name won't. Is pretty yeah. much what you're trying to say. Yeah, I mean, cause like, even like I, I, re- I was rewatching some old WrestleManias and like, uh, his match against Kurt Angle. Oh yeah, yeah, you know, that he was. Had the, he had like a fifty-minute match with John Cena, didn't he, on Raw at one point? Yeah, yeah. that was really yeah. good. Yeah. It was a little better yeah. than the WrestleMania match. I mean, yeah. it was. Uh, yeah. And it was for nothing. <laughs> and to think they gave it away on free TV. Mm-hmm. But then, but then when you talk about probably, but. I think I think what we've kind of said is that it's it's hard to narrow it down because like even then looking at like indie matches I've seen like um, Prince Devitt against um, uh, shit completely forgotten his name now um, but you know I've been around the indies a few times um, and you know like you know Pete Dunne against people like Trent Beretta you know that was like a camouflage bro that was a phenomenal match. Hey, how about, how about oh, yeah. um, Tyler Bate versus uh, Pete Dunne at uh, NXT uh, takeover? Yeah. Out of yeah. Chicago from 20, May 2017? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, and then, and then following on from that, like, sort of Pete against Walter and then mm. Tom Walter. But then Walter versus Tyler, yeah. 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 You know, like, there's been some absolutely phenomenal matches. Absolutely barn burners. Yeah. If you're um, looking at, if you're going to say about, um, about indie shows and and talk, telling the story and everything, like, and mm. especially like Tyler against Walter, you know that if that was if that was booked on a WWE main card, that would have been like a three minute squash match which had twenty seven finishes in it. Yeah. Mm. Oh yeah. Doing an NXT that should put on like a forty minute match, so you know, which is far more enjoyable and far more you know entertaining. So it's. Uh, but yeah, I mean, like, like I say, it's really difficult to pick out one match, and I can probably give you one answer today, another answer tomorrow, another answer oh. next. There's different yeah. things that pop into my head. Tell stuff me about that it. They'd already said reminded me of other matches, and um, so it's like this stuff. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go and rewatch that now. So um, that's my night sorted. Yeah. It's anyway. Nice. So, nice. Wife's very happy, but you know, I'll be uh, I'll be putting the network on after this. <laughs> Good man. So, not sure I did. Sorry, I can't believe I didn't mention Angle Michaels. That's a phenomenal pick. Oh, I dropped the ball there. I know. <laughs> no, see, see, that's what happens when you get put on Angle the spot. Benoit. Like, what, that's what's cute. your, what's your favorite match? And you just go, ah! yeah, because Angle's like my favorite ever, really overall, I suppose, and unbelievable. Yeah, sorry, Kurt. <laughs> see, see when we see when we came into the beginning of this podcast, like Shinsuke Nakamura versus AJ Styles didn't even pass my mind. It wasn't until we were started talking yeah. that was like, oh no, no, that was the best match. Ah, like, because originally I wanted to go for AJ Styles versus Jinder Mahal and SmackDown that one time. Oh, I was that that? And I saw the title change. Are you with that? I, I was. I yeah. was too. Oh, nice one. Yeah. I'd, I, I tried so hard to go and uh, behind the commentary table. We were technically, we Whoa, were. We back. might be on the same video clip. There you go. Wow, it's all happened. <laughs> nice one. Nice one. I tried uh, to go, but Megabus was incredibly expensive, and it was about two days before the taping, and they were just like, "No, no, give us like forty quid one way," and it's like, "No, no, no it's fine." See you, me. Right. Um. Jinder Mahal's terrible. Yeah. Um, can I just say that one of my best memories from that night is the crowd chanting at Jinder Mahal, you've got back knee, <laughs> which was amazing. And also uh, the chance of Byron's boring. Oh, <laughs> uh, Baron Corbin, uh, briefcase wanker. That was the, uh, that's what I enjoyed. Yes. And he did not find it funny. <laughs> no, no, he did not. Because he probably didn't get the reference for a start. <laughs> No, probably not. Um, I think also, we're now on to you, to be honest. 
Alexis, okay. your your matches. My matches. Thank you very much. Um, oh, Come to you. Life. Two of mine have already been mentioned, um, so I'm just gonna sort of briefly go over them. Um, Nakamura, AJ Styles, New Japan, Wrestle Kingdom 10. This is what hooked me into New Japan, and I've been a casual fan since. I make a point of watching Wrestle Kingdom now every year, um, just because of that match. Um, Tyler Bate versus Pete Dunne at TakeOver of May 2017. Um, I will be absolutely honest with you, I wasn't in the greatest of places health-wise during this time. And I remember sitting like under the covers um, in bed. I really wasn't with it because I was on pain medication. I'd just had an operation. And it was the moment that everything clicked into place where I finally went, it's going to be okay. This is going to get me through it. And I'd found what was going to give me that reason. And that's why SmackDown where AJ won the world title is even more special because it was in the same year and um, literally three hours before I went to, down to the operating room I got a text that said we're going to go and see Smackdown Live so for me that was that was the reason to sort of come back and get healthy kind of thing um, for a pure entertainment spectacle uh, King of the Ring 1998 what match am I going to say Hell in a Cell Hell in a Cell, yeah. Uh, Mick Foley versus The Undertaker. Um, it's not going to win the greatest match ever award in terms of technicality, but what it is is that moment where I think most wrestling fans sat up and went, holy shit, these guys are tough, or that wasn't meant to happen, and then carried on watching it through the hands. Yeah. <laughs> Um, That's when we realised that Mick Foley was one of the greatest pro wrestlers that's ever lived. Absolutely, and also the Undertaker, and I've, I've always respected him, but even more so now with the knowledge that he wrestled that match on a broken foot. Um, and he climbed know. down through the top of the cell and jumped and dropped on it as well. It's yeah, I think yeah. that was the moment yeah, that gave it away. If had he not have done that. I wouldn't have known anything about it. Um, but for me, I'm going to go a little bit left field in terms of my pick. Um, and it's because it's a tag team match. And I can honestly put my hand on my heart and say that this match made me fall in love with tag team wrestling. Um, and it is November 2016, take over Toronto. DIY versus the revival. Yes, two out of three falls match. Um, for me, tag team wrestling was often just a case. Oh yeah, well they've got tag belts, whatever. Um, but this made me appreciate tag team wrestling. It made me fall in love with both the revival and even more so with DIY. Um, if you watched the build up in the episodes prior to take over, the build up was fantastic. Um, it what it really was, you know, the classic heel tag team sort of the Ole and Arn Anderson kind of thing, and the bit the very popular baby faces with DIY, um, you know, and they were allowed to have a very very rare stipulation put onto that match, which told you that this is going to be it. This is going to be it, regardless of the outcome. Um, and it also gave the time that I felt they deserved as the unit that was. Um, you know, it was an absolute technical masterclass. Um, for me, it allowed for the suspension of disbelief at several points. Mm -hmm. um, I remember being heartbroken and so crestfallen when the revival got the first fall, and I was like, that's it, they're going to do it, they're going to do a clean sweep. Um, but I should know better than that. Mm. Um, <laughs> and, you know, really, you saw both teams pushing each other to the limit. Um, and then that that ending. That oh, the ending. I was just... With the where... hands? One where they had to... Yeah, where, where they, they held each other's hands and they were like, yeah. don't tap it, don't tap it. And at yeah. the same time, and they were they both like... Up at the same time. Okay. And for we me, have to. Yeah, for me, that was just amazing because it showed not only... 
how much the tag team titles meant to them but it also showed um how you know determined they were to stay as a team you know and hold on to those titles and then tapping at the same time was sort of that recognition of okay we can't get out of this you know we're gonna have to tap let's do it together kind of thing um and i just think it was fantastic um i would happily go back and watch that match again and again and again if i could um you know but i'm supposed to be a functioning adult in the world and i've got to do things like work so i can't um but yeah um that's that's mine um again like everybody else it would probably change tomorrow um you know but that was what i thought of you know i mean i could mention the gargano champa matches um that we've had on nxt you know we've been so spoiled um so yeah i'm i'm just gonna leave it there just gonna leave it there that's good is that yeah yeah well said right then so um we're gonna move on now to last orders um and basically well, um just before you do that like does anyone have ve- very last honorable mentions any any matches that may have came up between now and when you spoke for me okay from takeover that was a very good match that one was um yeah um, I have uh, Asuka versus Nikki Cross in a last woman standing match on uh, yeah. NXT TV that one time. Yeah. That was an incredible match. That was, to be fair. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah for me, I, I probably had pretty much 90% of the matches have been on takeovers in the last few years. Yeah. And yeah. It's in. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. I mean, you know. Um, is that due to the, thing, the type of wrestling you think, or is it just the time that they're allowed to put into the wrestling? Yeah, I think the fact that they only do sort of like five or six match cards, mm-hmm. and like every match gets a good run. Yeah. Uh, you know, even when there's not strictly anything on the line with the matches, they're still given a good amount of time. Um, you know, and the fact that you know they don't do massive arenas, but they so they've got like a hardcore. Yeah. Crowd there as well. Yeah. well they did until a few months ago. Um, so you know, but you know, just even if you just look over the last like 12 months of takeovers, you know, there's been some phenomenal matches, you know, obviously like Gargano and Cole, and mm-hmm. and stuff yeah, like that. and it's just like they everyone seems to put everything into it. Into it. What about uh, the women's uh war games match from war games last year? The women's one, yeah. The women's yeah. one was brilliant. That was really yeah, well done. That was. Yeah, it, 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 they had a very yeah. good blend of uh, actual good wrestling and storytelling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, and obviously that's still ongoing with the repercussions of it because obviously Dakota Kai and Tegan Knox are still sort of feuding and I think that's really good. I think it's, you know, the actions on one pay-per-view has lasted this long. It's very rare to see sort of now. Um and, and like all the, the Keith Lee, Dominic Dijakovic stuff. Yeah. Those oh, guys yeah. not be able to do what those guys can do. Mm. And then wow. together and you know, they've called up. For me, um, for me um, there's a couple. Um, I actually quite liked the blow-off match between Bret Hart and Owen Hart at SummerSlam after WrestleMania in the steel cage. Oh, that hell was yeah. Match. Um, <laughs> and then, like Matt said, we've got quite we like quite a lot of indie stuff uh there was a match that i was uh able to watch uh, from the front row and that is uh, again a uh, preston city wrestling show maybe about four or five years ago and that was kevin owens versus the bastard dave mastiff and watching dave mastiff who is about 300 pound do the rock flip up after getting smacked was everyone just <laughs> eight hundred people in the in the place just blew up and even Kevin what well, obviously he's Kevin Owens but then Kevin Steen just looked and went what <laughs> nice but yeah nice. Uh, I also liked um, I think it was Kurt Angle versus Eddie Guerrero where he yes. pushed his foot his shoe off 
at WrestleMania. Yeah. Anything with Eddie Guerrero. Um, yeah. Um, I thought was fantastic. Even the one from um, WCW Halloween Havoc against mm-hmm. uh, Rey Mysterio Jr. was yeah. fantastic. So. One more for me. Um, Punk, Cena, Money in the Bank. Uh, yeah. Why? Yeah. How did I not mention that one? That is a match that I even knew what had happened. I, I wasn't lucky enough to like see it at the time. I watched it the next night and I, I had it spoiled for me. It didn't matter. I was losing my shit, honestly. Oh, man. Sorry. That's it. Well, actually, I'm going to jump in there then. So DDP against Goldberg at Halloween Havoc showed what? that Goldberg, oh, yeah. DDP helped Goldberg have a very good match. And... The other one that for crowd reaction was Rob Van Dam versus John Cena at ECW. On that, on that, stand. that was amazing. Yeah, yeah. That was good reaction. Yeah. 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 Is that is that the one where Edge had the yeah, he had the helmet yeah. on. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, when oh, he threw the t shirt and then they threw it back at him and yeah. spat on it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is, that also, sure is that also the night when um, Paul Heyman said to JBL, the only reason you're a champion is because Triple H Triple doesn't want to work Thursdays, yeah. <laughs> Tuesdays. Yeah, Tuesday nights. And then who can, who, can, who can remember the absolute classic between the Sandman and the zombie from the first episode of PCW <laughs> on Sci-Fi? Wow. How did we no. forget that? Five, we five star oh. barn burner. <laughs> I'm actually going to say, and I might be a little bit biased about this, I'm going to say, only because I was there, I'm going to say the NXT UK inaugural tag team championship final at, take, at Blackpool TakeOver 1. Um, Grizzled Young Veterans against Mustache Mountain. Yeah. I literally gave my partner a dead arm, telling me, telling him to give me his shoe so I could hold my shoe up um, <laughs> against Zach Gibson. But he's a lovely lad. I've 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 met him, and he's Are with. You half? I did so? tell it to his face. <laughs> he's, he's all right. <laughs> You've <laughs> met him. <laughs> anyway, um, but yeah, um, I said to him, uh, I. Said to him, I love years, but you support the wrong team, so no. Um, but yeah, um, I remember the crowd being so flat after it because the energy we just gave to that match was unreal. And then the next thing is you had the lights go out and all of a sudden you heard Finn Balor. Yeah. And mm-hmm. We collectively lost our shit. <laughs> and then later on we were spoiled because, spoiler alert, Walter walked out. And yeah, you, at the end of what was a great match between Joe yeah. Coffey and uh, Pete Dunne as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And for me to be there and experience it, that was my first sort of like real experience of the pay per view. Um, so yeah, it was just amazing. Um, but I don't remember feeling that drained, even when AJ won the the title. I don't remember being that drained. I just that feeling of oh. And then, you know, it was something else that they could do to pull me back in. Um, so, yeah, there we go. Right. Are we done? Are we happy with that? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Perfect. You better right. move on before I start thinking of another five yeah. matches that I want yes, to talk about. I'm just going to tell you to shut up. Yeah, I think we've all been <laughs> the in picking our one favourite match, definitely, between yeah. us. Enjoy. So uh, how about Asuka versus... No. <laughs> And this right. call. So I do believe that last orders has been called. So with our main topics discussed, we're going to use this section um, to have that last drink for before we leave. So, what are your last orders, gents? So I think we mentioned the idea of stiff shots. So uh, yeah. we all came up with the idea of talking about Nia Jax. Yeah, <laughs> she's not like most birds. Go on. Yeah. So. Um, you know, how or why is she in the position that she's in, getting title shots when she's um, probably not the best worker? She's she's definitely not. She doesn't seem to be particularly safe. So I'm you know, going to be absolutely honest with you. You're talking about a company that had the great Carly as world champion, and given yeah, they were the desperate two, during that point. You know, given the two, I know who I'd much rather watch. Great Carly. <laughs> <laughs> rock though, isn't isn't she? Isn't he? Yeah, yeah. Um, that's, that's a big part of this. 
yeah and also um i was trying really hard not to go there and, so, and mention her family connections but obviously you can't ignore it um you know i noticed during was it backlash that was quite recent yeah uh i noticed that the rock's daughter was in the crowd mm. um i don't know if anyone else picked that up so i did yeah he still has that influence and yeah you know i think what they do with naya is great in the sense of she looks very very different to the rest of the women on the roster she is very confident she's very empowering i wish somebody like herself and piper niven was around when i was younger because it would have reinforced a positive stereotype for me um in terms of body image and stuff i don't think there would be any shame in putting her back on nxt she never, she never was on there was she to start she, with she was on there she was actually even, even marie's ballet yeah, yeah. Point. support and, wasn't she but they they rushed her to the main yeah. roster because of yeah. the name yeah they yep. did um i also have a feeling as well that it was because they needed a, a, another contender for someone to be honest yeah and uh, she's different so she stands out exactly People, you'll get eyes on her um regarding but regarding her um i think personally she, i just think um it's it's not her fault it's wwe's fault for not stepping yeah. in and saying look we need to do something to sort it out because unfortunately it's you that seems to be getting the short end of the stick by hurting people um, she may not necessarily be doing it on purpose, but it always seems to be her that's doing it or question, is involved in, the, in it. So The question that I'm going to counter that with is how much of it is the other person, if that makes sense. Now, the reason why I ask that is because if we look at other wrestlers that have been labelled as dangerous, there will always be another camp of people that say, oh, but... The person doing it so if we talk finn balor and seth rollins for example mm -hmm. you know seth rollins got an awful lot of negativity in the wake of finn balor's shoulder injury it but was... That, was, that one was a complete accident and nobody had like nobody was at fault with that because apparently the thing was seth rollins threw uh finn balor and finn yeah. balor reached back too far because like it like you know it was a missed it from seth rollins it wasn't deliberate that thing with sting was also not deliberate and i know what you're kind of saying with the yeah. whole like none of the nia jack stuff is deliberate either but the fact that this happened you know twice in the span of like what a month like and like this is not the first time the nia jacks hurt people either like at least like yeah when it comes to Seth Rollins, it was it was two or three freak injuries. Like, yeah, it's, like, uh, it's slightly different performing the move correctly versus mm -hmm. actually. I mean, the the buckle bomb that she did, she did, she missed the buckle. I, I oh, mean, yeah. I, 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 had you and then you throw someone face first into a metal step, they're probably going to bleed. Um, <laughs> so I mean, it, it's slightly different, and it's unfortunate with Sting because yeah. I, I watched that and I go, I don't understand how he got injured every time i've watched Me it too. i don't understand yeah. what what mm. caused it so because also like I, I just watched a video about like injuries uh before we came on and like the person that was doing that uh video mentioned that like that was the second buckle bomb that sting took in that match so he took the first one and it was fine it was just the second one done something to him and it's because he is you know in his mid-50s yeah like he he may have just like you know, moved his neck the wrong way and it, it, it done something that caused his body to kind of give out on him. Like, it's not exactly Seth. That wasn't Seth Rollins' fault. Like, maybe the only, like, injury that Seth Rollins caused in WWE might have been that, um, John when he Cena. kneed John Cena in the oh. face. And even then, again, <laughs> yeah. that, that could have been an errant knee and, like... Well, you see, incidents like that, they're all genuine and I don't... For me, I guess I'm trying to understand why Naya is getting so much negativity now i'm not saying that what she did was right i'm not saying that what she did was wrong i'm sort of trying to remain neutral because i do like the work that nia Jax does um 
but I can see why people are getting upset or, or concerned or whatever. I just think that there's blame on both parties involved. And it could be that either in training, Naya has been working on moves with somebody who's taller, with somebody who's heavier, um, heavier maybe. But also, she's she's possibly more cautious because of her ACL surgery. So she might be inadvertently putting her power elsewhere to divert it from her legs. Now... You know, you make it. You make a good argument. I'll give you that. Thanks. Um, um, what I'm I'd say, I, I still disagree, but no, that's fine, <laughs> and and that's what this is about. But, but you do make a good argument. <coughs> Go on. For, for, for me, um, obviously, do you think um, it could be down to, as you said, it could be down to who she's who she's facing? I mean, she isn't. She's facing quite a lot of people that are very very light, as in. Weight yeah, and also, smaller, yeah. yeah, yeah. And do you think she's you know, like, um, she doesn't it sounds daft? Does she know she her own power, her own strength? Because yeah, that's said, kind of what I was thinking. The way that she's throwing people, she's yeah. you, she's doing moves that shouldn't actually, um, she shouldn't be using. She She's yeah. one of these people that doesn't need to use a lot of moves to um put across her character, and she's using she started using moves that don't necessarily. Um, work with her and because of that it's affecting as you said her confidence it can affect her confidence How and it's hurting come from creative and production and the trainers going you should try that we don't like how you do this you should do this yeah I yeah but i would i just chime this. in and say she did punch becky in the face and mm-hmm. give her a concussion and, i mean yeah and that, that's one of the greatest matches taking, to that's not to picking never someone happen. up. That's Listen, just smacking them in the mouth. I mean, it was the I'm coolest, abs- coolest image ever of Becky you. like that. But, uh, I mean, it was... Uh, she it's still almost cost, she she cost her the match with Ronda Rousey. I mean, that's, yeah. we never got that one-on-one match in the end. Well, I'm going to yeah. jump in and say Randy Orton jumped out of a birthday cake on an episode of Raw and broke Dave Batista's nose. I it happens. Know. It wasn't that it was intentional. Both parties have turned around and said it was a freak accident that happened. It happens. Things are going to get physical. Yeah, but the, like the, I, I'm, I'm, I know, I know, I know. You're saying that. Like, like, don't get me wrong. I, can, I do agree with you to an extent. But like, Nia Jax probably has a list of injuries of yeah. other people longer than anyone else that's on the current roster. So, like, how many times can you continue to say it was a freak accident, or she doesn't know her own strength, or da 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 da, before you just come down to like she's just not that good. good. Yeah, for lack of a better term, and like, like don't don't get me wrong. There was a there was a period where I really liked Nia Jax, but then like she she started harming people like Emma, who was out for a long period of time, and then you know what? She really never recovered from that, and then got released, and then she's hard carry twice in as many months as they've wrestled, which is it generally is going to worry me when Carrie comes back and she's put against Nia Jax again because I'm going to yeah. be scared for her fucking life, um, and then. You know, like she punched Becky Lynch square in the face. Like <clears throat> you knew that spot was coming. Like why did you throw mm-hmm. around your body with that amount of force that you smash someone's face open? Um, I guess, I guess for me, the the point here is proving the intent. Because I can go on and say about Bob Holly, and oh, what's his name? Um, Daniel Pure. No, uh, Mark, Matt. Mark, somebody, uh, Matt, Matt, Matt Capitelli. Matt there we go. Capitelli. Like I watched that episode and I cried. Yeah, like, I, I so. couldn't have been more than sixteen, and I cried. I cried because I witnessed a so-called professional kicking the shit out of somebody that turned around and said, "I'm a fan." And when Matt sat on that sofa and he was talking to Taz and he goes, "I just want to know why," I was like, "Fucking hell, I get it, I get it." So, for me, that's the underlying thing, mm. the intent. There's, there's no intent with Naya, obviously. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean it's, it's not intent, but it's the fact that the fact is that people are getting injured. And, yeah. yeah. And, then, 
And then, so nice with her slightly, like when you're the size and power that you've got as Naya, yeah. you know, it, it reminds me of Ryback, and you know, he was just the same with his list of injuries. <laughs> yeah people you know it, it's difficult isn't it because naturally you're sympathetic to someone who's you know half the size you know yeah, getting, totally. getting thrown around like that of course so it looks worse on her but yeah i agree with you guys everything you said i don't have too much of an opinion on the max i haven't seen a lot of you know what you're referring to but i have seen the, against the steps and yeah. it was vicious and a, a, a kind of rudimentary maneuver like that can't really get that wrong no. mm. it was just kind of the way that like like see for example with the steps like um Again, I'm not trying to be all, oh, ooh, look at me, I'm the Kerry Sane fan because I'm wearing my Kerry Sane t-shirt and I love Kerry Sane. But, yeah, like, yes. it was just... <laughs> well, yes, yes, I do. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm not just being like, ooh, look, Nia Jax is the worst. Oh, but it was just, like, like the way that she threw Kerry into the steps, like, she wasn't ready for it. Like, it was almost like, uh, like she grabbed her head and just, like... Through it, so like Carrie's legs were like buckling under her. Like, see if you like made sure she was ready, like to be thrown, and then Irish whipped, and then she could have took the back bump that every every other person takes when you get thrown at the steps. But no, like she uh, kind of collapsed because she was thrown so like aggressively and quickly that her legs gave it from under her, under her, and her face went into the steel steps. Like that's the kind of thing. It was just like. Uh, uh, yeah, like you probably also argue, yeah. Oh, she doesn't know her own strength. It's like yeah, because she just threw a fucking woman across the uh, the arena and went face first into the steps. But also, like she wasn't made sure that she was ready. It just feels as if like some of the stuff that Nia Jax does is like maybe she's like too excited for lack of a better term, and just kind of like goes before people are ready. Because I mean, even like. You watch a couple of Botchamania episodes. There, there's, there's been times. In fact, in fact, I think it was during the first Kyrie match where Nia was trying to do a spot and she was ready to. I think it may have actually been the buckle bomb spot where um, they kind of <laughs> fiddled with the audio and you could actually hear Kyrie say, "I'm not ready. I'm not ready," and then she just threw her the the turnbuckles. Could that also be panic though, because of the lack of experience that she has? I but, mean, I'm, ju I'm just throwing out. You but know. she's been like at least like what three ish years in the biz at this point, possibly, maybe even more. But mm -hmm. at what point do we go, or at what point does the company step in and go, okay, we've noticed this? Oh, yeah, that's, that's the point I'm making, though. It's not necessarily yeah. her fault, it's just, yeah. but you know, why is she being put into this position when she's definitely got you know, some, some learning to do still. So yeah, definitely. Like, look, look, look at someone like Braun Strowman. He doesn't hurt people. You know, you yeah. know, I'm sure, I'm sure he has had matches where he's been involved with like some like the, the cruisers and stuff like that. And he'll throw them around, but he does it in a way that is make sure they're safe. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah and, and like you someone mentioned earlier about it's like the moves that she's trying to do, you know, Braun's working to a relatively limited move set these days. But it's yeah. a safe way of working. It looks hard hitting and stuff, but you know it, it's it's fairly safe. So you know may, maybe that's the, something that needs to be done with Nia is to limit what she does just to make her look strong. Possibly, right, lads. I reckon we should add that to another episode, and we should talk about it more in depth. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move swiftly on very quickly. Um, one of the things I had on the list was the edge injury your thoughts on that gentlemen please work do you reckon yes because okay, okay um so <clears throat> i feel like the news report came out very quickly after the match and they were like oh it's uh, oh he got injured at the pay-per-view and he's also already had surgery and he's recuperating and that was like by like monday afternoon and it's like i know that the match was recorded in advance but I just feel as if the report of he's injured, but he's already had surgery, it's going to be fine, came out really quickly. And, I mean, I went into the match knowing that he came out injured, allegedly, and I couldn't see a point where that actually happened personally. Like, if any of you did notice, feel free to enlighten me. But well, I don't actually, know. Actually, it I was feel... meant to be when they did reshoots. Uh -huh. yeah. Because the match was as edited as heavily as it was, which mm -hmm. what personally made it horrible. Um, one of the reshoots, 
I don't know when he. You know, I mean, there was that there was a camera angle where they locked up. Did you see where you can actually see Edge's head in the yeah, lock? The very start, yeah. Yeah, it was somewhere around one of the lock, one of the actual reshoots, rather than actually they supposedly done the match and then they wanted to edit bits and that he got injured in an edit, which makes it even more reason why I hate this style of doing it personally. But it, yeah, that's what they're saying. It wasn't in the actual, if it had just wrestled a match, supposedly got through the match without being injured. You make a good point with these sorts of matches, not to go off subject here, but let's say they're not filmed live. You've got a chance of retapes like they have done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what's the chance of injuries increasing? Just I because agree. something's perfect, they'd be tempted to do it again. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's that's not that organic. So different subject, but yeah, I, I can I can see that. Yeah, Undertaker and AJ. That was the same thing. That was a retake that cut the Undertaker's there you go. arm. Yeah, yeah. sorry. me. Right. Okay. Uh, and then lastly, someone suggested the continued impact of the current situation going on around the world um, and the lack of testing and WWE thoughts. It's pretty shameful yeah. for me. You know, I've seen how they do it at AEW. It's pretty, it's not the most advanced testing, but they do it and they're thorough, you know, and everyone must feel safe around that environment. And I, I think I heard about today about Kevin Owens like doesn't want to come back or something like that. He's not happy, you know, being there at the moment, you know, and who could blame him? I mean, it's not a great environment. What they're doing is already obviously taking a, a lot more risk than we've been advised to do by being in such close contact with each other. And the last thing you want to see is anyone take it a little worse, you know, because they're not doing something which look at who they are, you know, look at the company they are and what they represent or should be represent. So for me, I was, yeah, pretty shocked to hear that, I must say. And apparently they're supposed to have been testing them from the start. Really? Yeah, apparently. Yeah, they're supposed to have been testing them from Allegedly, the start. Allegedly, they were. And then, and then it stopped and then they used it off. They were like, oh, well, it's okay. It's just the, the, way, that the, the way that they've um, handled the whole situation mm almost as if it's almost comes across as if it's it's hurting Vince so Vince wants it wants it to go away and this mm -hmm. is his way by just putting his head in the sand and it won't matter because I'll just get on with it now you see I've I've heard today um that a NXT trainee has tested mm -hmm. positive it's a woman wasn't it uh, yeah. yeah apparently yeah it's a female it's someone that wasn't on the roster either it was mm -hmm. a Kind of audience yeah. member. Um, but they were being used in the audience. Yeah. So she's had contact with everybody in the audience. Mm. She's had contact with people backstage, I assume. She'll have had contact with, you know, the people. And it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And it kind of reinforces my anxiety to just stay inside. Uh, yeah. but, you know? Um, but should should it be their priority you know i mean this is a massive thing and us wrestling fans we have been quite smug recently as in mm -hmm. you know wrestling's the only yeah. sort of entertainment that's been going on and we were priding ourselves i know myself i've been going around being quite oh yes you know mm -hmm. i've still got some wrestling will never die wrestling will never die um and now i'm kind of like okay but at what point at what cost well, somebody you know? might die yeah, yeah. I, I don't want that. I'm pretty sure that everybody listening and... Arguably, I don't think it may die, but, like, it may... I mean, at least WWE should probably more think of, you know, the health of a lot of people. Like, I mean, yeah. considering, the, considering the fact that they're going through this, there's already a whole bunch of people that have been like, no, I'm not willing to work because I feel it's unsafe. Like, look at Roman Reigns pulling out of Wrestle, his yeah. WrestleMania match because mm -hmm. the Miz showed up slightly ill. And yeah. then... Like Roman Reigns walked out of that show that night, and then he had to just replace Braun Strowman at the last moment. Um, and ben then Ryan is another one. Yeah, yeah and the, the fact that he still shows up is biz like bizarre to me. Like, yeah. uh, but then also like the fact that again, Mez showed up ill, like it may have been a bit of a cold, and evidently it must have been because he was on SmackDown like the next week. Mm -hmm. But like they took him out of his WrestleMania match and made it that bizarre, you know triple threat one-on-one -on -one yeah. match for the tag titles and then <laughs> genius yeah. yeah and then they then they had uh sammy zane retain the intercontinental title then decide he's going to stay home and then have to strip him of his belt because he wouldn't come to work 
which I think Finn, feel is completely bizarre given what they've done with the likes of Devlin, what they've done with, you know, other wrestlers that have decided not to come into work. I think it's absolutely bizarre. You've got to have standards across the board. And I think... Well, I feel like they, they, they could work this in a really good storyline because I think Sami Zayn is really working it very well on um, on yeah. Twitter. Yeah, when he's like, uh, like WWE is posting a thing saying the new Intercontinental Champion should be, and then he he puts something like uh, yeah. undeserving or something like that. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, the other bit that's mental is you've put up those perspex screens, yeah, to potentially protect the wrestlers, and then there was a spot where they shoved a, a wrestler through one of the perspex screens and you were just like well i don't understand yeah. there's yeah. no there's, kind of common sense here is there been more I mean, than one spot of that yeah you're yeah, right it's just, yeah. it's there, there was there was there was that uh pull apart on raw a couple of weeks ago where um lashley and um drew mcintyre were fighting each other and the ref literally pointed to the wrestlers behind the screen and goes come round and break this up and then they came round. there's like what is the point of the perspex screens if you just let them run round at a moment's well, notice yeah <laughs> they don't I think uh, we've handled it better, you know, and in even, terms of even in, so- in terms of actual testing, but then also what where where they recorded a group of, uh, like a whole bunch of stuff mm. to start with, and now they've gone back to doing live shows. The fact that they're getting the actual, you know, recognisable talent sat around the ring, mm. they you know they're, they're using it for a bit of interaction and stuff like oh, that. They really and are. they're doing it very well with that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, can I just yeah. can I just say Chris Jericho on commentary? Can we make this a thing, yes. please? Definitely, please. Because, because, yes. He's, yeah. made yeah. he's made pineapple Pete's career. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. fair. Yeah, but yeah. Like, the, the other I thing, like, just WWE. very quickly, was uh, so, sorry, sorry, man. Mm. Um, the other thing, very quickly, just to go on with also what I said about the whole them coming out to break up the hodgepodge was uh i think it was raw this week or maybe last week or at some point like the uh street province even done that thing where they done their usual thing where they came out and the the uh, stage and they went ah and then they went into the crowd and just started <laughs> mingling with the crowd it's like what's the point of this i don't yeah. understand yeah well they, they, you know they have you noticed actually fans now as well they were meant to be originally friends, li- literally friends and family, but now they are fans. And some of the wrestlers didn't know that yeah. these people had been brought in. Oh and you're just like, it just sounds dangerous. I mean, you are right. AEW seems to be doing everything and yeah. as safe as you could do this. Yeah. Um, and at the end of the day, it's a whole question mark as to whether this is really essential. Uh, I mean, we've we've passed that, but that was always a, qu- a question mark as what? Yeah. You can't do this and this and this, but you can wrestle. That sounds mental. But anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Right, I mean, uh, even AEW can have a fan section, but they have it like well 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 back from yeah. where everyone else that's involved in the show is. Yeah. Um, I could be really sarcastic here and go, there's a major difference between AEW and WWE, but I'm not I'm not gonna be petty. Um, because I'm afraid, lads, that that's it. It's time to close the doors of the turnbuckle arms and lock up for this episode. But I wanted another beer. <laughs> well, sorry, you'll have to get one on the way home. Um, I'm going to phone dial a booze, don't I? Like, nice your one. rates are extortionate. <laughs> right, can I just uh, extend my thanks to my fellow brood members for being a part of this? It has been a blast, and I hope you've enjoyed it as much as me. Um, now I'm sat here, I'm like, what was I worrying about? That's been great. There you go. Um, <laughs> so I am going to be handing over the keys to Matt, uh, who's going to be our host for the next episode. Our social media pages, we have an Instagram page come in. We have a Twitter page. I think we have a Facebook page, or definitely through the With Johnna's, um, with Johnna's page. Um, so that will confirm the release date. Uh, and that's all that's left for me to say is you can send in your questions and your opinions to us via the social media channels and we do have an email address for you to get in contact with us it is turnbucklearms at gmail.com and you can help influence what we discuss and the opinions that you hear so on behalf of Brood thank you for listening stay kind be safe stay foxy I'm not
thank you guys. See you soon. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Hold on. Hold on.